Welcome to the symposium honoring Brenda Milner, a lifetime of brain science that we're celebrating in this, the 103rd year of Brenda's life. I'm Morris Moscovich. This is a picture of Brenda Milner standing in front of a portrait of Wilder Penfield that was then hanging in front of the entrance of the Montreal Neurological Institute, where I worked with Brenda in 1973-74 as a postdoctoral fellow. Here's a brief biography of Brenda. She was born Brenda Langford on July 15, 1918 in Manchester, UK. She attended Withington Girls School, where she studied math and physics, and then went to Newnham College, Cambridge on a Manchester City scholarship, where she studied psychology and was supervised by Oliver Zangwill, an eminent neuropsychologist, and in fact, a pioneer of the era. She had one year of postdoctoral fellowship to develop tests that distinguish fighter pilots from bomber pilots, a very useful activity during the Second World War. And then she worked under C.P. Snow, the author of Two Cultures, on radar research and development. There she met Peter Milner, an electrical engineer who was designing radar for aircraft. They married in 1944 and left for Montreal, where Peter worked for the Atomic Energy Commission, which was situated in Chalk River, Ontario. This is what Brenda looked like around the time she arrived in Montreal. She taught at Université de Montréal from 1944 to 52 in the Department of Philosophy. I don't think they had a psychology department there yet. But during her work at Université de Montréal, she had learned of Hebb and decided to study with him and was awarded a PhD under his supervision on the effects of temporal lobe lesions in humans. She did this work at the MNI, where she began working in 1950 and stayed there ever since. This is a picture of Brenda Milner at a rat lab at the University de Montréal. If you want to catch an interview with Brenda, here's a website to do it. Here are some of my personal reflections. As I think many of you already know some of her major contributions, I'll start with personal reflections. She was a terrific clinician, mentor, and became a good friend. This is what her office looked like almost when I was uh, there uh, as a postdoctoral fellow. It's a very unassuming office, not a lavish office that some eminent scientists have. Uh, you'll notice there's a typewriter here. At the time when I was there, the office looked pretty much the same. It was in the basement of the MNI. There's a small window here where you could look up and see the people's legs uh, walking on the sidewalk. The typewriter was also a lot older at the time, but this chair is the very same chair, I think, that ex existed when I uh, was a postdoctoral fellow. She was always thoughtful, insightful, and wise, and I enjoyed coming to talk to her. She liked me, but was critical of my being too speculative. Uh, it wasn't to her taste. She really was much more of an empirical scientist, though I think she had lots of good theoretical ideas. So to talk to her about theory, I plied her with data. She's determined and competitive, even feisty and tough, but always likable. She's a lively, spontaneous lecturer. You can find some of her lectures on the web and a great conversationalist. And both are informed by her great curiosity, as is her science. There is nothing that she is not curious about. She's interested in just about everything and has strong views about those things. She's interested in movies, books, politics, and current events, sports, especially cricket, and the Montreal Canadiens, especially Jean Beliveau, food, wine, and lakes parties. Here's a picture of me and Stefan Kohler with Brenda at a, her 100th birthday celebration at a restaurant in Montreal. And this is the symposium that was held in her honor at the Montreal Neurological Institute when she turned 100. This is Michael Petridis. This is Marilyn Jones Gottman. And you may recognize other people in the audience. You can read about Brenda in this wonderful article published by Watkins and Denise Klein. Brenda is a celebrity. But we know her just for her science or we're here to celebrate her primarily for her science. 
she made some major general contribution to neuropsychology and cognitive neuroscience. Those general contributions are in applying psychometric experimental psychology approach to studying patients with brain damage. Brenda considers herself an experimental psychologist, and she brought what she learned to the study of patients. And also, uh, she brought a careful functional neuroanatomical analysis to the data that uh, she collected. She was fortunate to be able to do that at a time when most other investigators had to wait until their patients died to be able to know where the site of uh, the lesion was. But in her case, the lesions were evident because they were made by neurosurgeons who extracted the tissue at the control epilepsy. Here are some of her major specific contributions. Brenda these days is known very much for her work on memory and particularly on the hippocampus. But there are two other areas where she made major pioneering fundamental contributions. The areas are in hemispheric specialization and laterality and on frontal lobe functions. For this research, she received many awards. Here are some that I selected. A fellow of the Royal Society of Canada and the Royal Society of London, member of the National Academy of the USA, an APA gold medal for a distinguished scientific contribution. She won a Bozan Award and donated a million dollars of it to the MNI and received over 25 honorary degrees. But my favorite is the Kavli Neuroscience Award, not because it's the most prestigious award uh, necessarily, and here it is, uh, she's receiving it with two other recipients of that year, John O'Keefe and Marcus Rachel. But because of this picture that was taken of the recipients of the awards uh, and some of the people who conferred them. This is the giant on whose shoulders we stand to be able to see further. So, we chose speakers who will be linking Brenda Milner's pioneering research to the present and perhaps offering us a glimpse into the future. Our first speaker is Linda Dell, who is Regents Professor Emeritus at University of Arizona. His talk will be Brenda Milner and the Hippocampus in her own words. Lynn knew Brenda because she was an undergraduate and graduate student at McGill in the 1960s and kept in touch with her ever since. With O'Keefe, he co-authored the hippocampus as a cognitive map, and with Moscovich, he co-authored multiple trace theory of memory consolidation. I had to get that in. He won many awards for his work, but the one I'll mention is the APA Distinguished Scientific Contribution Award, because it's the same award that Brenda won. Our next speaker is Marilyn Jones Gottman, a professor post-retirement at the Department of Neurology and Neurosurgery and Psychology at McGill University. She'll be speaking on left, not right in the human brain, Brenda Milner and hemispheric specialization. Marilyn received her PhD uh, under the supervision of Brenda Milner in 1975 at McGill University, and then stayed on, as did Brenda after she got her PhD at the MNI from 1978 to the present. Her research is on brain function related to cognition and epilepsy and work on human olfaction and gustation. She's lectured widely in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. Our next speaker is Brian Kolb, who's professor in the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Lethbridge. He'll speak on Brenda Milner, pioneer of the frontal lobes. Brian did a postdoc with Brenda Milner at the MNI in 1976. His research is on development of frontal lobes and its responses to pre- and postnatal factors, such as stress and hormones. Among his very many publications is a standard text, Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology, that he wrote with Ian Wishaw, and that is now in its eighth edition. And among his many awards, he's an officer of the Order of Canada. Our keynote speaker is Maybrit Moser, professor at the Kavli Institute for Systems Neuroscience. She'll speak on functions of the hippocampal system 65 years after Brenda Milner opened the doors. My Britt received her BSc at the University of Oslo and her PhD in the Department of Neurophysiology at the same university. Then in 1995, 96, 
as a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Oslo. She also went to the University of Edinburgh to work with Richard Morris and University College London to work with John O'Keefe. She is a professor of neuroscience now at the Kavli Institute, as I mentioned. She mentored over 50 graduate students and postdoctoral fellows, and with Edvard Moser, made the discovery of grid cells in the entorhinal cortex. With that discovery, Mybrit put the entorhinal cortex on the map, just as Brenda Milner had put the hippocampus on the map. In addition to discovery of grid cells, she also identified a number of other functional cell types in that same region of the brain. She's a recipient of many awards, including membership in National Academies of Norway, Sweden, USA, and Germany. And for her work, she received the 2014 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, jointly with Edvard Moser and John O'Keefe. Leslie Fellows will provide the closing comments with Brenda. She's a professor in the Department of Neurology and Neurosurgery at the MNI and is group leader of the MNI Cognitive Neuroscience Unit, which is Brenda's home and has been her home for 70 years. Leslie received her BSc, MD in residency at McGill University, her DPhil at the University of Oxford. Her research is on the brain basis of value-based decisions, mild cognitive impairment and chronic health condition, including the effects of social factors on it. Among her awards is a Rhodes Scholarship and she is president-elect of the Society of Neuroeconomics. We hope you enjoy the symposium and find it enlightening.